Hello and welcome to the Phone Burner Training. My name is Jeff Osnes and I'm going to be walking you through our training. On this particular training, I want to talk about using webhooks and phone burner. If you're watching this video, then you're probably already aware of what a webhook is and why you'd want to use it with phone burner. For those of you who don't, real quickly, what a webhook will do for you in phone burner is allow you to take the call outcomes as you're making calls and send that information along with all of the contact details to some other system. In our training today, we're going to be using the webhook feature in Zapier because it's really easy for me to set one up and kind of show you what's happening. But back to phone burner. Let's go back into phone burner. So let's say we select these contacts and we begin a dial session. As we're making these calls, we may want to have the outcomes of those calls sent to our webhook. There's a couple different ways we can accomplish this. One, we can have every call outcome sent to one webhook URL so every call can be logged. That is a perfect option if you want everything sent to your webhook or your endpoint URL. However, you may run into situations where you don't want every call sent to your webhook. You may only want certain call outcomes sent to your webhook, in which case you can actually configure your dispositions in PhoneBurner to hit one endpoint. So for example, you could have one webhook for all of your interested contacts and another webhook for your not interested contacts. What I want to do right now is show you how easy it is to apply a general webhook to your account that the system would hit after every phone call. So when you're logged into your account, you're going to click on the little menu in the upper right hand corner and go to dial session settings. In the general settings, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you're going to see two options, call begin webhook and call end webhook. The call end webhook is going to be the most important for you. In this option, you want to insert the URL that you would want to have every call outcome sent to. So let me show you how that would work. I'm going to go back to, to Zapier and let's take this zap right here, call done webhook general. I'm going to edit this. When I'm editing this webhook, I'm going to go to the setup webhook right here. This is where I'm going to get the URL. I'm going to copy this URL to my clipboard. I'm going to go back to phone burner and I'm going to apply that URL to the call and webhook section. Then I'll save changes. Now that I've updated this, every call I make from within this specific account will send the call outcome along with all the contact details to this webhook URL. So let me show you. I'm going to go back to contacts. I'm going to select a list and begin a dial session. And we'll do three or four calls. And now I'll start dialing. So let's say I'm calling the thing and he doesn't answer, goes to voicemail, I click the voicemail button and we're off to the next call, right? Let's say Sam Sample doesn't answer, I hit the no answer button. We're off to the next call. Now we're calling Andrew Sample, let's answer that one, end the call. Let's say that one we booked an appointment. So we click booked an appointment and we move on to the next call. Now we're calling Sally Prospect live answer, end the call. Let's say this one is a follow-up. And I'm going to go ahead and pause this session for now. And we're going to move this off of our screen. And let's go to our webhook zap in Zapier. And we'll go to the test this step. So here you can see I've actually tested this before. I'm going to go ahead and see more samples and get more samples. And here you can see some new samples have been pulled in. So if we go ahead and expand each one of these, let's take this one. Here's our follow-up. Let's expand this one. You'll see booked appointment. And then this one, no answer. So there we go. We got a few samples that came in and as you can see, every disposition is gonna be hitting this webhook. What's nice about this option is you can go in there and apply this one webhook to your account and you're done. You don't have to go in and apply it to each individual disposition. Now there are a couple downsides. One, with a system like Zapier where you're going to be charged for every time they have to process an activity. So you may not want to have everything hitting that webhook URL. Another downside is if you're part of a team, if you apply it to your general settings in PhoneBurner, that only affects your account. Whereas if we apply it to specific dispositions, we can share those dispositions with our team and we can essentially set up the webhook URL for our entire team through the disposition. And of course we can set up different URLs for different outcomes. So anyway, back to the general webhook URL. Before we move on from this, I just want to point out what's cool about Zapier is if you have everything going to one webhook URL, you can capture it all and then using the paths option, you can actually send different outcomes down different paths. So for example, I could take path A, 
send those records to HubSpot, but only do it if the status is a booked appointment. So let's go grab that status from Phone Burner. So if I click this booked appointment button, that means that status would be sent to the webhook. And I want to capture that as an exact match and only continue down this path if it's an exact match. So I hit test and continue. It's actually going to fail because the record that I selected is a follow up. Let's go back to home, test this step. This one is our booked appointment. So let's select that one and hit continue. Now let's go back down path A, go to our rules, test and continue. And look at that. So we can set up this specific zap to only move booked appointments down the pathway to HubSpot. We go back to home, go back to test this step. Let's say this is our follow up, right? Now let's say if we get a follow up, we want to go down path B. Now that might be send a text message. That could be whatever you want it to be, right? You get to decide where it goes from here. We just need to tell the system what we're looking for. Test and continue. That's an exact match. So now going forward, path A is for booked appointments, path B is for follow-ups, everything else is ignored in this particular example. You can create as many paths as you'd like in Zapier. So once again, that's our general webhook. We create one webhook, everything hits it. We may not want to do that for everything. So there is another option. If we go back to Phone Burner, so here we are looking at our dial session settings. We're looking at the actual live answer set. If we edit this booked appointment button right here, you'll see the last option when you're editing a disposition is this webhook option. You can put a webhook URL and this URL will only affect this specific button. Even if you have a general webhook URL, the button webhook is gonna take priority. So let's say for example, let's go back to our dashboard. Let's say we have this specific zap that we want to use. Go to the catch hook, go to the web hook here. We're going to capture this URL. We'll update the disposition to hit this web hook endpoint. We'll save it. So now we have both a general web hook and we have the specific web hook assigned to the booked appointment button. Let's go do another dial session. Let's click on contacts. We'll select some records and begin a dial session. And I'm going to do the first one as a no answer. And we'll do our next one as an appointment booked. Or booked appointment. And then let's go ahead and pause dialing. Move this off the screen. So if we come back here to the webhook zap, if we go here to the test this step and we get some more samples, what you'll notice is we're not going to get all the samples. We should only have booked appointment, right? So that's the only thing that should come in new on this one because the only thing that's triggering anything to come to this zap or this webhook is that booked appointment button or disposition. Then at this point, we can do whatever we want with this data that has been sent to the zap or the webhook URL. Obviously, if you've got your own webhooks, you can do whatever you want within your own system with those. So before we wrap up, let's go back to our dashboard. Let's go to our general webhook URL. And I'll show you if we go back to test this step and get more samples, we should only have one new item come in. And that's for our no answer because once again, we have a specific webhook URL that is assigned to that specific disposition. And so that overrides the general webhook URL that, that was applied to the account. And that's how easy it is to start configuring webhooks within your phone burner account. So let's just review that real quickly. Back in phone burner, if you click on the menu in the upper right hand corner, you're going to go down to dial session settings. Under general at the very bottom, the call end webhook is where you would put a general webhook that we would hit after every call for this specific account. If you go to dispositions, you can update your specific dispositions or buttons to hit a specific webhook URL or endpoint URL. This will override anything that you put into the general setting. And lastly, I do want to remind you that what's nice about the dispositions is you can share those with your team. So if you have a specific webhook URL that you want everybody on your team to be hitting, you can apply this at the admin level and share it with the team. And you don't have to log into each user to update their general settings. Just make sure the webhook URL is applied to each disposition 
that needs to hit that webhook as they're making calls. Thank you for taking the time to watch this particular training video. I appreciate you watching this and I hope this helps you get more done using the power of phone burner. Happy dialing.